Send us see what. The Australian Greens also wholeheartedly support this motion. Anybody who was in the Great Hall and heard the apology could not fail to be moved um, with the words um, that were spoken and the genuine emotion that people felt um, hearing those words. It is genuinely a very significant step in helping the forgotten Australians and former child migrants to healing. Over seven years ago, the Senate delivered its first report on this issue, the Lost Innocents writing the, writing the Record Report, which focused on the issue of the suffering of child migrants, predominantly from Britain, but also from Malta. Over four years ago, the Senate then delivered its second report, the Forgotten Australians Report, which tackled the issue of neglect and abuse of children in institutional or out-of-home care within Australia. And in June this year, it was my privilege to deliver on behalf of the uh, Community Affairs Committee its third report, uh, HOPE final report, Lost Innocence and Forgotten Australians Revisited. Today in the parliament, the Prime Minister delivered a formal apology on the behalf of the nation for all of those from these groups who suffered neglect and abuse when the welfare was the, was the responsibility of the state and they were supposedly under the care um, of the state, it was good to see Australia finally acknowledge the hurt and damage that has been done. Hopefully in the weeks and months to come, we will see all of the states and territories who have not yet done so, including South Australia, Victoria, New South Wales, deliver, also deliver, oh sorry, New South Wales has, I beg your pardon, um, deliver apologies. And hopefully we will also see that the churches and institutions who have so far not um, formally apologised to forgotten Australians and former child migrants, those who are involved in providing care or rather failing to provide the care. We, we also look forward to seeing them um, offer their sincere apologies for the harm that they have caused. We want to hear and justice demands a clear, public, unreserved expression of sincere apology um, and acknowledgement of the awful wrong and injustice that was done to those innocent and accepting children during their critical formative years, when they have every reason and every right to expect that they would be care, care for, nurtured and, most importantly, loved. It's the overwhelming comment that you hear from people, is the lack of love to children that were in care and should have expected better or could have expected better. We understand now, and in fact I believe, there was every reason to um, un believe that then it would have been understood that the long-term consequences of children growing up in loneliness and in great hardship in, and in institutional care, um, that that would have severe um, and long-term um, impacts on those children. The ne neglect and abuse suffered by these children cannot be excused by any reference to good intentions or to the prevailing norms of the day. It was wrong. It was wrong then and it is wrong now. It is an injustice knowingly committed on the innocent. Childhood should be a time for growth and nurturing, for exploration and play, and for above all to learn about and experience friendship, family and love. It should not be stark and grey and regimented. It should not be a time of loneliness and fear and abuse. It should not be spent on menial, hard menial tasks or wasted and pointless repetitive tasks. It should not be lived in fear and misery. Yet half a million Australians lived that way. For those children who were not only neglected but experienced physical and sexual abuse, I fear that even the best and most sincere and heartfelt apology will, will is only the start. In fact, I know it's only the start. The damage has been done by the years of ne neglect is significant and severe and leaves scars that take a lifetime to deal with and, in fact, impact on the next generations. We, we have acknowledged today that this abuse happened and we have said sincerely as a nation, sorry. We wish that it did not happen. We would do anything if, it, if we could turn back time and, uh, and undo that harm, but unfortunately we cannot. What we must do is our very best to help those who have suffered now that we've make and made, taken um, this first step of an apology. We have to ensure the consequences of what occurred to these children um, are dealt with. We need to support these people for the rest of their lives. We need to show them care and support and do all in our power to ensure these abuses do not happen in the future. It has been a challenging and, and, and I must say, extremely uh, emotionally gruelling for um, 
uh, the people that have worked in the three committees um, look, looking at these issues. We listen to stories and to evidence and experience secondhand the neglect and abuse. And it, this, our, what we felt pales into insignificance compared to the pain and discomfort experienced by those who were brave enough to tell us their stories. Today, in the Great Hall, I was sitting next to a lady called Therese Williams. She was in an institution in Geraldton, and she's told me the story which I promised to relay today so that some, so other people could hear it and remember Elaine Sinnott. She was abused and, in fact, died as a result of a kicking um, in, uh, applied by a nun in Geraldton at the age of 10 on the 26th of June, 1948. Therese had never told this story today, and she had a little frame with a picture of um, Elaine's headstone. I promised that I would tell that story today so that Elaine is remembered and that we um, never allow this sort of thing to happen to a 10-year-old again. I also have recently had the privilege of reading a book by Margot Auburn, who's in the gallery and is also an institutional survivor, her and her brother, Michael. This story tells the time of their institutionalisation in St Vincent's in Brisbane and then in boarding school after it. It tells the stories that's common to all the stories that you hear of the uh, people in institutional care, forgotten, those formerly forgotten Australians, now remembered Australians, and of former child migrants. It talks of pa it, it, the, theory, the themes that come through in Margot's story and her brother's story, but also in many other stories, is of pow powerlessness, of seeing abuse and, and not being able to do anything about it. And Margot tells of seeing abuse of her brother and feeling powerless as a child of not being able to do anything about it. One a common theme for um, forgotten Australians tells, or tell also of wanting to be invisible in institutions because that's how you survived. If you're invisible, you could survive a bit better. Of course, the stories of uh, there's abuse and trauma come through all the stories that you hear and also in, Mar in Margot's story. The story, part of Margot's story also tells of visiting um, in, in St Vincent's, the nursery, and seeing cots and cots and cots of babies putting their hands up to be hugged and loved, of the smell of wet nappies and runny noses and no one dealing with that. And Margot tells of not wanting to go back because of the, because of the feeling of helplessness and, uh, um, in dealing with uh, and not wanting, to, not wanting to have to deal with that. That story, I'm sure, in fact I know, has been repeated in institutions across this country. Those are the issues that people remember and, and will carry with them to their graves. It is our duty as um, Australians to support these people, half a million people. But it's not only the half a million people that were directly affected by institution, it is their families, their parents, many of whom went to their graves thinking their ch children were dead. Many of these people thought their parents were dead. And of course, then it's the impact on these, these people's children. If you've grown up since you were little in an institution, you're not shown love, you're not shown care, you're shown abuse, you don't learn how to love others, you don't learn how to cuddle your children, you don't learn parenting skills. So what was done to these people has had direct impacts on the next generation. We need to be aware that we also need to be helping those people. Very strongly support the Prime Minister's commitments for the new initiatives. There was many other recommendations that the Senate committee made, and I implore the government to implement those recommendations as well, because this apology is a first step, an absolutely essential first step, and you only had to see and feel the emotion in that chamber to know how important this apology has been. But we need to back it up. We can't let it be just words. We need to back it up. So said the Greens very strongly support this motion. And I'm very pleased to see that finally the recommendations of the committee reports have been implemented.